When the clever Anansi came to Jamaica, he planted a magic seed that would produce one giant yam every day. Anansi would take the yam in the evening and bring it home to his wife and seven children who would cook it for dinner. However, before anyone was allowed to eat, they had to say the yam's name. If they couldn't, they went without dinner. And since no one knew the yam's name, no one ate. This went on for a long time until his oldest son, Kanimoren Fada, became determined to learn it. Look here, Fada. I must find out the name of that yam. How are you going to do that? I don't know yet, but tomorrow I will know it and you will have to share it with us. You will never know it. Don't worry, everyone. Tomorrow we'll be eating that yam. The next day, as Anansi went to get his yam, Kane Moren Fada secretly followed him. While his father was harvesting it, Kane mashed okra on the rocky ground and hid in the nearby bushes. Anansi stepped right onto it and smashed the yam to pieces. Yam fufu! As Anansi went about picking himself and the pieces up, Kane Moren Fada slipped home and told everyone that the yam's name was Yam Fufu. Waif, take this and cook it up for dinner. You know the words? When she puts the yam on the table, you guess its name. You see it, you eat it. You don't, no dinner for you. That night, as his wife served the yam, Anansi stood. What's my yam's name? Yam Fufu. No! You put that okra down. What okra? The okra I slept on. Be more careful where you walk. Yum fufu. 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 Nobody knew it but Kani. You said we only had to say it, not know it. We all eat yum tonight. And that night, for the first time, everyone had dinner. After, Anansi's friend, Br'er Tiger, came to the house as he always did. What's wrong? Kani, figure out me Yam's name. He's too damn smart. We have to get rid of him somehow. Unknown to Anansi and Tiger, Kani Morenfara snuck under the table to eavesdrop. Rid of him? Look here, Tiger. Every tack I put up, Kani Morenfara breaks down. I want to kill him. But I don't know what way to do it. Let me kill him for you. You'll do that for me? Of course I will. But how will you manage it? Put up another tack and I'll get him while he's in it. Look here, Tiger. Tomorrow night, just at dinner time, you come here, hide yourself in the pepper tree out back. Hide behind the fattest limb and wait. I'll send him to pick some peppers. When he's up in the tree, reaching for them peppers, push him off. Then, when he's hurt on the ground, you can finish him off as you want. Good? Good. Good. And the next night, as everyone was getting ready for dinner... Kani! Come here! What? Go get pepper from the pepper tree. Why? I want peppers for dinner. How many? As many as you can bring. Kani Morenfada went out toward the pepper tree, and on the way, he grabbed a fire stick. He climbed the tree, and when Tiger came out, he hit him. Oh! Tiger fell to the ground while Kani slid down, tossed the stick, and went back into the house. Where's the pepper? I had something in the tree, so I didn't pick any. Anansi ran out to his friend. What happened? Kani Mano father hit me with a fire stick. <sighs> Damn, Kani. The boy always beats me, Tax. We must catch him. The two sat and plotted a way to get rid of him, but Kani Morenfara predicted this, and he slipped outside to listen. How now? You come here tomorrow at 12 o'clock, and I'll send him up the coconut tree. While he's in the tree, you wait at the bottom. When he comes down, clap him! See you tomorrow. After, Anansi helped him up and sent Tiger on his way. Once they were gone, Kunny grabbed a bag and filled it with fire ants. The next afternoon, Anansi went to his son. Kunny, go get me a coconut. Sure. 
That's a good boy. He did as he was told, but on the way, he grabbed the bag of ants. He climbed the tree, and once he did, Tiger showed himself. Hello, Tiger. Kani. Why are you here? Anansi asked me to come by. Oh, I'm getting him a coconut. Would you like one? Yes. Which one? A big one. <laughs> Point to one. As Tiger looked up into the tree, Cunny threw the bag of ants at him. When it hit him, the bag split open. <laughs> Cunny grabbed a coconut, slid down the tree, careful not to get near the ants, and tossed it to his father as he walked past him. Later that night, Tiger came back to the house, and once again, Kani Morimfara listened. The boy is smart. Hmm. But I've got a attack for you to catch him. Look here. Tomorrow at 12 o'clock, you should find yourself at Miyang. Then you'll see at a fat root near a tree. You must hide in the bush, and I will send him there to cut off the yam. When he's doing that, you stab him. Brer Tiger did as he was told the following day, and soon after he had chosen the perfect hiding spot. Cunny came upon the yam. Yamoe! 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 Huh. I thought Fara told me to shout for the yam, and the yam will speak, but I shouted, and that yam didn't speak. Yamoe! 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 Oe! Ah! A talking yam! That is too much for me! Cunny was too quick for Tiger, and that night, Anansi and Tiger plotted as they had done. But they knew Cunny would be listening, so in the night, while Cunny slept, they came into his room and tied him up. <sighs> Grab him! Uh, oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 boy. They carried him to a wooden coffin and threw him in before nailing it shut. I knew I'd get you some day. Take him and throw him in the sea. Tiger began the long walk to the shore with Cunny in tow. But by morning, Tiger passed out from exhaustion underneath a large tree. While he slept, Cunny banged on the ceiling of his coffin until he was interrupted by an old man. Strange thing for a person in a coffin beating to get out, wouldn't you say? Whoever's there, you must help me! Why should I help a man in a coffin? I don't want to go to heaven. I'm not ready to go yet. Boy, you are too foolish. Heaven's a good place and you don't want to go there. Get out and I'll take your place. And the old man did just that. Cunny took the man's sheep and began to walk toward home. Not too long after, Tiger woke up, took the coffin to the shore, and tossed it in the sea. When he was back at Anansi's home, the two rejoiced that they were finally rid of Kani Morimfara. Thank you! Finally put up a tuck that Kani couldn't break down. But that was soon shattered when Kani and his flock came walking up the path. There's no way! I thought you'd drown him! Now look at that boy! Look at him, he's driving a flock of sheep! No, I threw him in the sea! Boy... Didn't I throw you into the sea today? Yes. The place where you threw me is where I got these sheep. But if you threw me further, I could have had double this. I want to get some sheep myself. Can we me do this place? Into the coffin with you. Cunny and his family eagerly built Anansi's coffin. When it was finished, they nailed him inside and Br'er Tiger carried him out to sea where Anansi was drowned. <laughs> <laughs>